Visit www.petroglyphtour.am to see Armenia in a new light. When in the country, we will take you around to see the Armenian petroglyphs, the oldest writing system in the world. This is an exceptional opportunity to step away from civilization by getting closer to its sources. Armenia, a country where humanity's past, present, and future meet. Where eternity is sewn together. The Bible tells us that our global history starts in the Armenian highland. Some of the earliest of mankind's written legends and epic poems, such as the Sumerian Epic of Gilgamesh, Plato's The Republic, and the Old Testament, detail Armenia as the land of Ararat, the promised land, where paradise on earth is located, and where foreigners sought wisdom and immortality. According to the Bible, after the Great Flood, the new civilization walked down the slopes of Ararat. The beginnings of a new life were started with Noah spreading good tidings and a dove carrying an olive branch in its beak. Is it by accident, then, that this biblical cradle of civilization turned into an altar of Christianity? The teachings of Christ were already reflected in the Armenian highland during his lifetime. Moses Hordanazi writes in his History of Armenia that Abgar, the king of Edessa, who was converted to Christianity, sent a letter to Jesus Christ inviting him to his kingdom. Well aware of Christ's persecution, he writes, I possess but one small city, but it is beautiful and large enough for us two to live in peace. Koranazi's work contains other documentation of this as well, when the king's messenger Anan, representing Jesus, delivered this image to King Abgar together with Christ's response. This image is currently preserved at a church in Genoa, which used to be Armenian.
However, it was only in the year 301 that Christianity was proclaimed the state religion in Armenia. St. Gregory the Illuminator is credited with converting Armenians from paganism to Christianity. These events are described in detail by eyewitness Agathangehos in his work Armenian History. He describes the architectural design of the first Christian church that came to St. Gregory in a divine vision as follows. I saw four columns, each surmounted by a cross, carrying arches that supported a wonderful hexahedron and a divine edifice, with a dome made of clouds. In 301, the construction of Holy Etchmiatzin Cathedral commenced in the capital, Bacharshapat. This center-domed architectural design served as a basis for Armenian church construction, which later on developed and was spread all over the world through the efforts of Armenian and European architects. This fact is also highlighted by French scientist Le Couillet, who wrote that this type of church design inspired the construction of numerous Christian places of worship around the world, including Russian cathedrals, Scandinavian churches, the French Germany des Prés, and many others. Etchmiatzin Cathedral, and later the Theodoros Church in Bagaran, served as a basis for a type of Armenian churches characterized by an external and internal cruciform tetraapsidal shape plan and a dome on four supporting pylons. The St. Theodorus Church, located in Western Armenia, today's Turkey, lies in ruin now, sharing the fate of thousands of other Armenian architectural monuments. This type of church construction later spread to Europe, the best example of which is the Church of San Marco in Venice. The Ejmiatzin Bagaran type of churches became the basis for the construction of churches in Georgia and that of all neighboring countries that had adopted Christianity after the spread of the religion from Armenia to these countries.
Svartnots Cathedral is considered a masterpiece of central domed churches and of Armenian architecture in general. This three-floored church, built in the 7th century, was a novelty in architecture. With a 45-meter-high cruciform interior, the church's external form was circular. The 7th century can truly be considered the golden age of Armenian architecture, according to A. Jacobson, a renowned historian and expert in Armenian architecture. Prominent art critic Joseph Sturzhagovsky affirmed Jacobson in the conclusion of his studies, saying, Interrelation between a number of domed constructions scattered around in the Balkans, Italy, as well as on Frank and Spanish lands may seem impossible. However, looking back at the lasting results of the impact of Armenian art in Europe, it becomes clear that they all belong to Armenia's domed constructions in the age of early Christianity. In a relatively short period of history, the waves go from Ararat to the west. This is not the first example of the dispersion of Armenian religious architecture. Similar examples can be found in the history of Western countries since Christianity's early period. First, it was Armenian spiritual thinking that influenced the West, followed by the talent for church construction. Armenians have been pioneers in spreading Christianity in the world for centuries. Very often, they were canonized by European nations. The European church historiography tells us that Armenian evangelization in the West commenced even before the proclamation of Christianity as a state religion in Armenia. According to both legend and detailed historical evidence available in Florence, St. Minas, or St. Miniato, an Armenian, preached the new religion in the Toscana region, an action for which he was imprisoned, bore great sufferings, and was beheaded at the bank of the Arno River on October 25, 250. Fu martirizzato San Miniato Martire Armeno, di nome negli antichi documenti di Minas. Minas fu santificato, canonizzato dalla voce di tutto il popolo, perché 
col suo ardore e con la sua grande fede, aveva trasformato questa città, piccola città romana, ma soprattutto le campagne della Toscana in regioni di fervida fede cristiana universale. Perciò ogni anno noi veneriamo, preghiamo, ricordiamo questo santo martire che è venuto dall'Armenia, ha portato la fede nell'Italia, nell'Europa. A church in Florence bears the name of the Armenian preacher, having been renamed San Miniato by the locals. The first records on the church date back to the year 783. In 1018, Florentine Bishop Alibrando constructed a new basilica at the site of the chapel. During the construction, San Miniato relics were unearthed from the foundation of the chapel. The grateful people of Florence made a golden letter inscription, Saint Minus, the King of Armenians, above the altar of the church. To date, the people of Florence commemorate October 25th as the date of the city guardian, San Miniato. Approximately 20 saints of Armenian origin are known in Italy alone. Et que certains de ces personnages sont même considérés comme des saints d'origine arménienne dans notre propre calendrier. On pense par exemple à Saint Servet ou Saint Macaire, mais il y en a d'autres, je pense aussi à, à Saint Grisol. Ce sont tous des personnages des, des premiers siècles de l'ère chrétienne qui ont un lien ou une origine euh, euh, avec l'Arménie. Grâce au fait que l'Arménie devenue chrétienne est entrée dans ce monde qui, qui l'a dépassé à l'époque. Alors ces, ces saints-là, ils sont célèbres chez nous évidemment pour des raisons d'évangélisation. Ce sont ces personnages qui ont fait partie des premières générations, qui ont christianisé euh, nos contrées ici, ce qui n'était pas encore la Belgique à l'époque, mais ce qui faisait partie de la Gaule, euh, de l'Empire romain. La plupart de ces personnages, ils sont connus aussi parce qu'ils ont connu une mort euh, dans, dans le martyr, puisqu'une des, une des particularités de l'évangélisation, c'est qu'elle passe en général par le martyr de ceux qui, qui la propagent. C'est le cas de, de Saint Grisol, mais c'est le cas aussi de beaucoup d'autres euh, saints. One of these Armenian saints preached in Belgium and the Netherlands. As known by locals, this is Saint Servatius, whose Armenian name is unfortunately left under the veil of time. Many sources prove his Armenian origin. This beautiful church, bearing the name of Saint Servatius, stands in one of the central districts of Brussels. There are a number of churches named for him in Belgium and the Netherlands. Saint Servatius was known as the Bishop of Tongeren, who then moved to Maastricht, 
today's Netherlands, and died in 384. People made Servatius, the Armenian foreigner, sacred as they witnessed his miracles. This church stands on the cemetery with his relics. Our church, our parish church, is dedicated to St. Servatius. In Latin we say Sanctus Servatius. In our own Dutch language we say St. Servas. In French we say Saint Francais, Saint Francois. Saint Servatius, he came here in the fourth century. He is born in Armenian and he came over the Alps to the west of Europe. And at that time, the people here who lived in this area were not Christian at all. So he started to preach and to tell something about the gospel, about Jesus Christ. And he built it many churches, especially in Wallonië, also in the Limburg of the Netherlands and in this area. And Armenians continued to preach everywhere. The geography of evangelization spread into Western Europe, Central Asia, and India. In their hagiographies, the Holy Fathers mention dozens of Armenian saints who are recognized by the Catholic Church and who contributed to the spread of Christianity in the world. Gregory of Tallard in Gapance, south of France, San Biagio in Italy, Saint Blaise in Germany, Mucker in Central Asia, and Thomas of Kana in India are several of those Armenian missionaries who came to Western Europe. However, this was still just the first wave of Armenian preaching. Avec l'invasion musulmane, mais on a une deuxième vague extrêmement dense et très bien documentée avec le 10e et le 11e siècle où on peut mentionner notamment euh, Siméon de Mantoue pour lequel on a des textes quasi contemporains. Macaer de Gand, pour lesquels on a une vita ancienne écrite par un témoin oculaire ou peu s'en faux. On peut également mentionner Grégoris de Passau en Bavière, pour lequel on a conservé des plaques euh, résumant sa vie. Et sur ces plaques de bronze, on lit en toutes lettres « Natione Armenorum » de la nation des Arméniens. Grigoris, the Archbishop from Armenia, the Hermit of Passau, and the teacher of St. Engelmer, who died on September 23rd, 1093. This is the epitaph for St. Grigoris. The written records of Winberg Monastery, located in the vicinity of Passau, Germany, include the following statement died at noon during the solar eclipse and buried in front of the monastery altar. The cemetery of Archbishop Grigoris can still be found in front of the renovated Holy Church altar. He had several disciples in Bavaria who were later considered saints. Gregory of Pithiviers was also well known in the region. Ce, ce saint, qui est mort donc au début du XIe siècle à Pithiviers au sud de Paris, est très clairement euh, un saint arménien, puisqu'on parle de Saint Grégoire d'Arménie, 
Et la caractéristique de ce saint, c'est qu'à la lecture de sa vie, on s'aperçoit qu'il est le premier à avoir introduit en Occident le pain d'épices, qui deviendra une euh, spécialité de la région. Et aujourd'hui encore, quand on va à Pitivier, quand on va au vieux musée, on voit le plus ancien moule à pain d'épices de la région, qui est considéré comme le, le plus ancien pain à pain d'épices conservé aujourd'hui, moule à pain d'épices conservé aujourd'hui, et on lit très clairement Saint Grégoire d'Arménie sur le moule. Here, we encounter a preacher of Armenian origin in the city of Ghent, Belgium, in the 11th century. While visiting a number of European countries to preach, Saint Makar, or Makarius, as pronounced by the locals, was hosted at Saint Bavon Abbey in the year 1011. News of his curative miracles and self-sacrifice had spread everywhere. Bishop Macarius of Antioch was posthumously declared a saint by the Congregation for the Causes of Saints of Rome, which recognized that he was a miracle worker. Saint Macarius is also mentioned in the Acta Sanctorum of the Catholic Church. A witness of St. Macarius' miracles left an interesting record, saying, Not the gold of Arabia, nor the sorrow of Syria, but the flower of Armenia is the glory of Flanders and the adornment of people of Ghent. The impact of Armenian religious thought in Europe is manifested not only in preaching, however, Alongside evangelization, Armenian spirit, thought, and breath penetrated European church construction. The earliest information we have on European church construction by an Armenian dates back to the year 416, as outlined by the French Great Larousse Encyclopedia. The encyclopedia notes that Jean Cassin from Armenia built a church in Marseille. Ces contacts que l'Arménie a commencé à développer avec l'Occident, avec ce qui allait devenir l'Europe à l'occasion de sa christianisation, ces contacts ont continué tout au long de, de l'histoire arménienne et on peut voir aussi pendant tout le Moyen-Âge occidental des personnages en lien avec l'Arménie. On pense par exemple au, à l'architecte ou aux architectes de l'église de, de germinie les prés en France, qui n'est pas une église arménienne mais qui est une église dont l'architecture est imprégnée par l'Arménie. Germigny des Prés was built in the year 806 by Charles the Great's architect Odo of Messina. Germans called him Odo von Metz. His Armenian origin is proved by French orientalist and arminologist Antoine Mayer, as well as by the church guide of Germigny des Prés. French art critic Henri Fossillon wrote the following regarding this church in Orleans. Germigny des Prés reflects an oriental image. The history of the church comes from an oriental model. This undoubtedly is the Armenian Etchmiadzin Cathedral. The Quadra Apse plan resembles the Etchmiadzin Cathedral and the Bagaran Church as well as other worship monuments in Greece and Dalmatia, writes Le Couillet. This is corroborated by church abbot Toti. To get a good understanding of this interesting construction, we should bear in mind the role of Armenia, the most initiating country in construction in the oldest Christian world of the Orient.
There is another architectural monument resembling Bagaran, which was built in the same era in Milan. The chapel of San Satiro is a quadra ab structure with a dome and four columns. Greek architect Grigori Dimitrokalis has scrupulously studied the San Satiro Bagaran issue based on the works of different scientists and has written the following. This architectural type emerged by the unification of the cruciform plan and the triaps quadraps design, which originated in Armenia and penetrated into Greece and the West through Asia Minor. The greatest proof of Armenian traces in European church construction came from that of Leonardo da Vinci. A new wave of interest towards da Vinci's valuable scientific heritage arose in the 19th century. Jean-Paul Richter, an architectural theorist, showed where da Vinci's talent got inspiration from. Considering several pages from the Codex Atlanticus, he brought up da Vinci's so-called Eastern Issue. Richter's theory, called Leonardo in the East, was published in 1881 in Zeitschrift für Bildende Kunst magazine. The Eastern Hypothesis, which had a more general meaning, was renamed into the Armenian Hypothesis several years later due to Austrian art critic Sturzhagovsky. One of the written manuscripts of da Vinci from the Codex Atlanticus, preserved at the Ambrosian Library or the Biblioteca Ambrosiana in Milan, contains his notes on his visit to Armenia. It also provides the descriptions of Taurus Mountain and the Euphrates River with a sketched overleaf map of Armenia. Another manuscript preserved in the Royal Library in Turin contains a drawing of three Armenian heads, according to Richter's interpretation. Da Vinci's sketches resembling Armenian cruciform central dome churches have been preserved in the archive of the library of the French Institute in Paris to this day. Some of da Vinci's manuscripts mentioning Kalikia are preserved in England as well. We may assume that this is not a complete list of da Vinci's manuscripts pertaining to Armenia. However, what we have today was considered enough for historians to insist on the Armenian background of da Vinci's architectural talent demonstrated in Europe. 
Da Vinci's pages pertaining to Armenia and preserved at the Ambrosian Library are called the Armenian Letters and are addressed to the Devadar of Syria, Lieutenant of the Sacred Sultan of Egypt. Da Vinci wrote, The recent disaster in our northern parts, which I am certain will terrify not you alone, but the whole world, shall be related to you in due order, showing first the effect and then the cause. Finding myself in this part of Armenia, to carry into effect with due love and care the task for which you sent me, and to make a beginning in a place which seemed to me to be most to our purpose, I entered into the city Kailandrafi, near to our frontiers. This city is situated at the base of the part of the Taurus Mountains, which is divided from the Euphrates and looks towards the peaks of the great Mount Taurus to the west. In the rest of the letter, Da Vinci describes Mount Taurus, its structure and its size, and provides sketches of the mountain. The manuscript contains descriptions of the nature of Armenia, as well as subchapters of a planned book on Armenia. Specialists claim that the disasters described in Da Vinci's manuscripts are the earthquake and the flood in Yerzinka in 1482, as they are characteristic of this settlement built at the foot of Mount Taurus on the bank of the Euphrates. Some historians cast doubt on da Vinci's journey to Armenia, assuming that these letters are the result of his vivid imagination, and that the fragments of the book included in them are just outlines of a future novel. However, even if da Vinci had just planned to write a novel, he had directly linked it with the Armenian reality. Here is another clue suggesting his journey to Armenia. When speaking about painting colors, da Vinci uses the term terra armena, dark yellow or light brown, a color not used by any other artist. We may assume that he personally brought the constituents of the color from Armenia. However, Armenian church architecture was, most likely, a stronger tie connecting da Vinci to Armenia. Well aware of the rich heritage of this genius of the Renaissance, particularly in terms of church plans, Sturzhagovsky adds, If we compare these stretches with Bagaran church plan, and if it weren't for da Vinci's reputation, we would have assumed that these plans are the sketches of the architect of Bagaran. In the 1580s, da Vinci, Francesco de Giorgio, and Bramante were members of the Collegium of Engineers in Milan. Some art critics think that this cooperation led to the concentration of their attention on temples with domes and central patterns. Da Vinci might have presented his plans to them during their meetings. Accordingly, da Vinci became the bearer and the developer of Armenian engineering thought in the West, contributing to the worldwide recognition of Armenian architecture. In his book, entitled Leonardo da Vinci, the Architect. Architect Mikhailov writes, Leonardo considerably surpassed Bramante, and it is possible that he contributed to the maturing of the latter's creative thinking. Without Leonardo's brilliant architectural sketches, we possibly wouldn't have had Bramante's famous works in Rome.
the same concept of four square quadra apse pylons with domes and an internal pattern of an equal winged cross, similar to Bagaran and Etmiatsin, dominates in all plans proposed for the construction of St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. Yete, Renaissance is a monarch, I task on it. Galisa in Tegus ink nurun, no bramant in Cam Leonardo, I tesaketin or Catarial Tachari orinak, and this anume, Nursi Dertis Carapsit, can better choose your nerivera, I think, and marriage Matin Bagani tipper. Apa make Nupes Apartanalu Iran Kun and Gote. Danis are Hazat Ari Arachart and High Charter Petri Ekelain Deran. Uncle Nanis drank Tessel and Techen Tessel. But Medis Hazat Ari Heto, at Haskaner Ekelena Hyde, Kartikin. Dozens of central dome churches were constructed in Italy between the years 1485 and 1530. Due to architect and biographer Vasari, this Armenian architectural type is expressed in a clearer, almost genuine manner in the Church of Madonna della Staccata in Parma, completed in 1521, when compared to St. Peter's in Rome. A similar pattern is found in the church of Carignano, built in 1552, and this is still not a complete list. In his two-volume work, Architecture of Armenians and Europe, Sturzhagovsky concludes, Armenians officially adopted Christianity before Rome. Without being inspired from other examples, Armenians established the construction for the gathering of the faithful, the domed square premise. Armenia played a special role in early Christian art as undoubtedly the pattern of a dome on a square with four apses has been the main motive of church construction from the beginning. <laughs> Armenian stonemasons, builders, and clergymen also contributed to the spread of Armenian culture with their group journeys from country to country. There were over 40 Armenian churches in Italy alone during the Renaissance. Apennine Peninsula has been a productive ground for Armenian culture and church construction for ages. Es ist nicht zu verstehen, die europäische Kulturgeschichte ohne den Einfluss der armenischen Menschen und der armenischen Kultur in der Architektur, in der Militärgeschichte. Erwähnenswert sind auch armenische Heilige, die in deutschen Landen bis heute sehr verehrt werden. Nicht zuletzt ist zu erwähnen die Arbeit der Mechitaristenpatres. The Mikhitaryan congregation on St. Lazaro Island, Venice, became the logical reflection of Armenian religious life in Italy and the beacon of Armenian culture and religious life 
in Europe. In 1717, the Senate of the Republic of Venice presented St. Lazaro Island to Mkhitaryan congregation as a token of friendship. This is the lighthouse of Armenian culture in the center of Europe with a mission to enlighten and bring together scientists and philologists, composers and painters, clergymen and pedagogues, and, naturally, Armenians. The congregation plays an invaluable role in the preservation, development, and spread of Armenian culture and spiritual values. Armenian traces may be found everywhere in Europe. From architecture to military art. This dates back to the many Armenian military commanders who held the post of Viceroy of Byzantium. The most prominent of them are Nerses Haikazun Patrik and Isahak Haikazun. The latter's tomb in the church of San Vitali, Ravenna, reads, The glory of his motherland, Armenia. There is another inscription in a 7th century church on Torcello Island, not far from Venice. The first church of the island was built for the glory of Isahak's motherland. We come across a commemoration of another honorable Armenian in the region of Avignon, France. Grateful Frenchmen have erected a small but compelling statue of Jovanes Altunyan at the center of the city. This agriculturist of Armenian origin gave a significant contribution to the development of agriculture in the region in the 18th century. Europeans were also well aware of Armenian letters and history. The ceiling of the entrance staircase at the bishop's residence in Würzburg, Germany is decorated with the fresco of the great Italian painter Tiepolo in the 18th century called the Four Continents. In the Asian part of the fresco, the artist painted Mesrop Mashtots, the creator of Armenian letters and the Armenian alphabet. Both the painter and the client were most likely well aware that Mashtots' letters were not only written symbols, but had great moral value as well.
proof of a civilization having reached the west from Ararat may also be found in the national epic poems of several European nations, namely the Basques and the Bavarians, who mention Ararat, Armenia as the cradle of their ancestors. So this is the way Armenian religious thinking and cultural talent spread from Ararat to Europe and gave its indelible contribution to our global civilization.